type in Ford Motor Company around the world. Uh, basically what we do on this line is we hand build engines, but uh, what is unique about this line, uh, there are other areas where engines are hand built obviously, but our line, uh, what we have is automation married into the line that helps us assure the quality of the product. Uh, and it also has some unique ways that we present the engine to the various operations uh, and to the workplace. These are distributorless engines, uh, pretty much maintenance free once they're in your vehicle. But after the extensive training I went through and seeing the quality that's built into them, I'm real excited about them. They're, they're really well built engines. Our employees are uh, go through a, uh, a, a process where they are screened, where they are interviewed, uh, and they understand what the expectations are up front for coming on this line. All our operators, we work in teams of two. A team of two operators will build an engine from start to finish to make sure that everything that goes into that engine, they did themselves. At the end of the build, when the engine's completely built, they have the confidence with the experience and the training that they've had to sign that engine that that's their engine. They build it, that everything in that engine should be perfect. We have brought a couple of the vehicles out. Uh, a few of the employees has had, have had an opportunity to actually drive the vehicles, uh, so there's a tremendous amount of excitement about it. Oh, it's exciting. Um, I think the uh, way the economy has been, that people are ready for an engine that will give them economy plus performance. It'll, uh, especially with these engines, it'll, it'll put the fun back into driving again. Certainly, that's one reason why we did that. We wanted to give the guys an extra feeling of pride, uh, the fact that they built the engine up from uh, the roots and uh, completed it. It is literally their engine and they take pride in that. John Hassey. For the past four years, I have been the design leader for the new 4.6 liter modular engines as installed in the 1996 Cobra and GT Mustang. This is the cast iron cylinder block that is used in the GT version of the 4.6 liter engine. It has been enhanced in 1996 to be suitable for application to the Mustang. This is the all aluminum cylinder block that is used in the four valve Cobra engine. As you can see, it is considerably different in architecture from the cast iron engine used in the GT. I'd like to point out to you some of the architectural differences between the modular series of engines and the conventional engines that they are replacing. You notice to begin with on the cylinder block that we have a deep skirt construction. In the past, we've tended to cut off our cylinder blocks at the center line of the crankshaft in order to save weight. But on the modular engines, we actually extend the material down lower in order that we can cross bolt our main bearing caps. You'll notice on, the, on our modular engine here that we use the two traditional 
vertical bolts to secure our main bearing cap. But we also cross bolt and have two horizontal bolts coming in from the side that actually go through the outer wall of the cylinder block and secure the main bearing cap more securely than ever before. This gives us a great deal of stability at high speed and is one of the reasons modular engines are very quiet in operation. Now on the four valve engine we expected a much higher RPM capability as well as greater power output and to that end we went a step further with our main bearing caps. You'll notice that on the aluminum alloy block we actually use four main bearing cap bolts to secure our main bearing as well as using the cross bolts that we mentioned earlier. This, this results in actually six bolt fastening of the main bearing caps on the modular Cobra engine. To further enhance the capabilities of the four valve Cobra engine, our main bearing caps are cast of nodular iron. The nodular iron is stronger and more crack resistant than the gray iron that is used in our GT engine. A further benefit of the deep skirt construction of the modular engines is that we're able to more securely fasten our bell housing that is on our transmission. In the past, we've only been able to bolt on the transmission using the top half of the engine. But thanks to these lower mounting points, we now can bolt onto the full circumference of the bell housing. This for it makes for a much stronger and rigid powertrain structure, which results in smoother operation at high speeds and a quieter vehicle and engine. The modular series of engines also benefits from the computer-aided design work that was done to produce what we call low distortion bores. Our bores do not go out of round as they do on more conventional engines because of the use of these long head bolts. These bolts are much longer than the traditional ones that are used on our carryover engines and they actually extend through the head all the way down to the main bearing bulkheads. What this does is enable us to clamp more evenly on our cylinder bores and prevent them from going out of round during assembly of the engine. The benefit of low distortion bores is that we can fit our pistons tighter than ever before. At the same time, we can use lower tension compression rings. The result of this is a quieter, smoother running engine, as well as an engine that gives better fuel economy and performance. I'd like now to look at the crankshafts that we use on our new modular engines. This is the crankshaft that's used on our GT engine. It is of a conventional cast iron construction. And although it looks rather conventional in appearance, it actually is about 15% stiffer than the five liter crank it is replacing. This is thanks to the computer aided engineering design that went into it. This added stiffness is beneficial at high speeds by reducing the crankshaft torsionals and bending moments that make objectionable noises at high RPM. Now for the Cobra engine, we knew we had to go to an even higher speed and load than we have ever before in the past. And to that end, we've designed this new crankshaft. It is a forged steel, induction hardened journal crankshaft, which is fully counterweighted to reduce bearing loads. You'll also notice that we use eight bolt fastening of our flywheel on this crankshaft, two more than on the GT. Overall, the Cobra crankshaft is about 35% stiffer than the five liter crankshaft it is replacing. This greater stiffness ensures that we will have smooth, quiet operation even at the 6800 RPM red line of the Cobra engine. Because of the higher speed requirements of the GT and Cobra engines, a great deal of effort was put into the lubrication system of the engines. This oil pan is one of the new components that was designed for the lubrication system. As you'll note, it is of a, of a deep sump construction not just in the area here of the oil pickup screen, but also in the front of the pan over the cross member. You notice that these scrapers have been positioned to remove the oil from the crankshaft and move it back to the sump as quickly as possible. Also a baffle is used to keep the oil in the sump during hard acceleration, deceleration, and cornering. Both the GT and the Cobra engine use a low oil level sensor. This low oil level sensor tells the customer when his, crank, when his sump is about a quart low and tells him to add oil appropriately. Because of the still higher speeds that the Cobra is expected to reach, the added feature of an oil windage tray has been designed for this package. It fits into the oil sump approximately as you see here. It's bolts to the main bearing caps and its purpose is to keep the oil away from the crankshaft throws and in the pan where it belongs. The baffle ensures that not only do we have a good quantity of oil in the pan at all times, but also good quality oil. I'd like to take a moment to look at the power conversion components of the two engines, or the piston and rod assemblies. 
This is the rod and piston assembly that's used on the GT, and this is the rod and piston of the Cobra. You will notice that on the GT engine, the piston has a deeper dish. This is because the compression ratio on the GT is 9 to 1. On the Cobra engine, the piston is more flat topped, and that's because our compression ratio is higher at 9.85 to 1. The Cobra has a unique rod assembly. If you look at the big end of the rod, you'll notice that the Cobra is much thicker in the area of the, of the bearing. This ensures that we have good bearing concentricity at high speeds. Also, a unique bearing is used. This is a board aluminum bearing as opposed to the brooch bearing used on the two valve. The board bearing helps with oil film retention and ensures that we have good lubrication even at the high speeds that the Cobra can experience. The one feature that most differentiates a modular style of engine from the 5 liter is replacing is the fact that it is an overhead cam engine. This is the cylinder head that is used on the two valve GT engine. As you can see, the camshaft has been moved from the cylinder block into the cylinder head of the engine. They directly actuate the two valves per cylinder. By eliminating the push rods and tappets of the 5 liter engine, we're able to dramatically reduce our overall valve train mass and increase the speed at which the engine can run. Now on the four valve Cobra engine we take this a step further. As you can see we actually have two camshafts per cylinder head as well as four valves per cylinder. This again reduces the overall reciprocating mass of the individual components. If you compare a GT intake valve versus a Cobra intake valve you'll notice a dramatic difference in size. This size differentiation allows the Cobra engine to rev to about 1,000 additional RPM over the GT. Now to ensure that we'd be able to reach our power objectives on the Cobra engine, we have designed a new cylinder head casting specifically for the Mustang. In this particular cylinder head casting, we have revised the inlet ports down in the throat area to improve the flow and power capability of the engine. With the increased RPM capability of the four valve engine, we've been able to obtain 305 horsepower from our new motor. And now Brian Anderson, one of the engineers who helped design the Cobra engine, will continue this presentation. The camshafts that were developed for the modular engine employ a unique high technology method of manufacturing. We actually begin with a hollow tube and the cam lobes are formed separately out of high strength centered metal. They're then press fit onto the tube and the tube is extruded locking them in place. In order to develop the high horsepower that we desired on the Cobra engine, we needed to develop a very aggressive cam profile. On the current four valve engine that's in the Lincoln, the secondary valve legs the primary, but on the Cobra engine, we brought the secondary lobe even with the primary so that they're both actuated at the same time. Additionally, we increased valve overlap by five degrees. The camshafts are chain driven, which provides a, a very smooth engine operation and is extremely quiet. We even went further on the Cobra engine and provide what we call a fine finish chain. Each chain link is polished prior to assembly, which provides exceptional durability right up to redline. The intake manifold that we designed for the GT engine is constructed of lightweight composite material. This is manufactured using metal cores. The molten plastic material is poured over the metal cores and the metal is melted out, leaving only the manifold remaining. This provides exceptionally smooth surface finish on all internal passages in the manifold. This manufacturing process is so precise that there's no machining at all required on this part. These brass inserts are simply pressed into place after the manifold has solidified. When we decided to go after 300 horsepower on the Cobra engine, we knew that we had to greatly enhance the airflow to the cylinders. Therefore, we developed this all-new 8-runner open plenum intake manifold. Each runner is cast separately using a high-technology process that allows us to produce 2 millimeter thick walls. The runners are then placed into the intake manifold plenum chamber and an epoxy material is poured in. The manifold assembly is then baked at 400 degrees, allowing the entire assembly to solidify. The upper intake is really just a cover. This is placed over the open plenum chamber, allowing unrestricted airflow to all cylinders. 
The airflow to each valve is controlled by the intake manifold runner control assembly. As you can see, there are butterfly valves in the secondary port openings. At low engine RPM, the butterfly valves are closed, allowing air only through the primary ports. At high RPM, the valves snap open, providing air to each valve. This assembly is controlled by the intake manifold runner control module. At 3250 RPM, this module receives a signal from the engine's EEC system telling it to open up the butterfly valves. The throttle body for the GT engine is fairly conventional. It uses a 65 millimeter bore and a side mounted throttle position sensor. For the Cobra engine, we developed a large twin bore 57 millimeter throttle body. This is as opposed to the four valve engine on the Lincoln that uses 55 millimeter bores. Additionally, you can see the throttle plates are staged together as opposed to the four valve engine in the Lincoln where they're staggered. This provides increased airflow and added acceleration. The air cleaner assembly uses a large bore 80 millimeter mass air meter. In addition, we have a conical air cleaner assembly. This provides relatively unrestricted airflow to the inlet system. The exhaust manifolds are constructed of high strength, high silicon molybdenum material. This, is, this material is extremely tough and very crack resistant. The flanges have been reinforced to provide excellent sealing against the cylinder head surface. The oil pump that was developed for the modular engine is a G-rotor style oil pump. This has fewer parasitic losses than a conventional oil pump. Additionally, due to the high RPM requirement of the Cobra engine, we designed a one millimeter thicker flange that provides increased oil flow. You can also see that in comparison to the pump used on the GT engine, the inlet is larger. For this engine, we developed and patented a full flow oil cooler. This cooler is used on the Cobra and on automatic transmission versions of the GT. The cooler element is pressed into this casting. All the fluid from the radiator is circulated through this cooler before entry into the engine. This assembly is mounted to the engine using the oil filter adapter. The fuel injectors used on the GT engine pump fuel at a rate of 19 pounds per hour. On the Cobra engine, we use 24 pound per hour injectors. This is the EEC module used on the modular engine. This processor monitors such functions as RPM, airflow, and crankshaft position, and makes minute adjustments millions of times a second to optimize engine performance. The OBD2 chip is contained integral to this processor. Due to the added weight of the Cobra crankshaft, we needed to add mass to the Cobra crankshaft damper. You can see that in comparison to the GT crankshaft damper, the flange is considerably thicker. The GT flywheel is constructed of gray iron. For the Cobra, we use nodular iron. Nodular iron is extremely tough and durable. Additionally, we use an 8-bolt mounting pattern on the Cobra flywheel. On the GT engine, we use a 6-bolt mounting pattern. I hope that this detailed presentation of all the components that make up the GT and the Cobra engine will assist you in answering your customers' questions. for the 1996 Mustang Cobra, of course, is its all-new powertrain. But that's not the only story for 1996. There have been other significant developments in this car. Hi, I'm John Clore with the Special Vehicle Team. Let's take a look at some of the other changes that make the Cobra the balanced performance road car that it is. First off, 
Let's take a look at our rack and pinion steering gear for 96. You'll note what we've done is we've cut away part of the rack and pinion unit so you can see that for 96, we've now helical cut these gears instead of straight cutting them. But that means the edges are beveled. As you can see here, the intermeshing is smooth. There's much more precision. Also, the bearings that used to be bushings, these are now roller bearings been inserted in both edges. That also provides smoothness and precision, as well as durability. I'm sure if you get behind the wheel of the 96 Cobra, you'll feel the improvement in the steering immediately. But no story of the Cobra would be complete without talking about the braking system. The front brakes are 13-inch vented discs, providing plenty of surface area. What we've done here is cut away part of the disc brake rotor for you to see inside. Note that the veins are curved. What this does is pull in air from the outside to help cool the braking surfaces, making it less prone to fade after repeated hard stops. Stopping on that front rotor is our Cobra front caliper. These units are manufactured by PBR in Australia, one of the world's leading brake manufacturers for racing components. You'll note that this is a twin piston design. You also have an isolator to keep the brake shoe from squealing and rattling. Out back on the Cobra, we have an 11.65 inch rear disc. This unit is as large as many of our competitors' front disc brakes. You note that the rear disc is also vain. Stopping the rear disc, we have a caliper manufactured by Ford. It's a single piston unit. But any talk about the Cobra brakes wouldn't be complete without taking a look under the hood. Let's go see. Now, if you notice there's something missing, when you look at the driver's side of the dash panel, you're right. That big black round box you used to see, the vacuum booster, has now been replaced. It's replaced by a HydroBoost system. It's not new technology. It's been used on trucks for years. But this system allows us some compact packaging advantages. You notice that the 464 valve engine is much wider than the 5 liter that it replaces. It's also much taller. And because of that, we had to incorporate some styling changes for the 96 Cobra. First off, the hood. Now the new hood has a power dome or a blister, if you will, over the center of the hood and we've taken the snorkels off the side of the GT hood and moved them inward to incorporate a, a smoother design. Cobra retains its reflector headlamp system, proving so popular, and of course its trademark front fascia with the round large fog lamp. New for 1996 as well is the wheel. The same design has been incorporated on a new BF Goodrich tire, which we'll talk about later. But we've gone back to painting the dark argent inserts on the wheel, much like we did on the 1994 Indy Pace car. We've made some noteworthy design modifications to the rear of the 1996 Mustang Cobra. First and foremost, you'll note the rear spoiler. Last year, many of the Mustang owners told us that the spoiler with the fluted ends belied the car's clean looks. This year, you see that we're using a cleaner look spoiler right off the 96 GT. Also note the bumper cover. No longer does it have the word Mustang embossed in it, but rather Cobra, listening to what many owners wanted. But perhaps the biggest story for 96 is the new taillight design. This design uses complex reflector technology that we use in the headlights. We've gone to a very vertical stance, much like the early Mustangs, instead of the three-bar horizontal unit. Now, in addition to our Cobra Coupe, we will be offering a, a convertible model this year. Colors this year, white, red, black, and our brand new exclusive Mystic. Interior choices, black and saddle in either cloth or leather. But the big news inside is the PATS, or passive anti-theft system. Now there's a small transponder located in the key. When you insert the key in the ignition, it's read by an antenna in the steering column. That signal is then sent to a control module. If the code matches, the car starts. If the code does not match, or if the key is not inserted or it detects no key at all, it will not enable the EEC-5 system to start the Cobra. We think that's really going to enhance the ownership experience of the 96 Cobra. But not all the news is outside the car. There's a lot of new things underneath the car. Let's take a look. You recall that we told you the 4.6 liter engine was much taller than the 5 liter that it replaces. Some of that room was made up by replacing the number two cross member underneath the Mustang Cobra. This gave us the opportunity to make this unit far stronger and beefier, more rigid, giving the car a more rigid feel. It also allowed us to change the suspension geometry on the Cobra. 
We have now improved the anti-dive characteristics and given it a more positive on-center feel as well as improving communication through the steering column. Up front we have the Cobra's 29mm anti-roll bar. Of course we have the story of the new T45 5-speed manual transmission. Our exhaust system is also different on the Cobra. The power loss from the back of the engine through the exhaust tips is only 6.9%. That's world class. Moving further back, we have a 3.27 rear axle ratio in our differential with its Ford Quadrilink suspension, as well as a 27 millimeter anti-roll bar. The exhaust tips on the Cobra are also unique. They grow to two and three quarter inches for that deep throaty sound. New this year is the BF Goodrich CompTA radial on the Cobra. Here with that story is Chuck Paulson from BF Goodrich. Chuck?